Hello, and welcome to that Pokemon thing that your grandkids are into. A game about playing Pokemon Go as an old man. And as you walk around, little monsters start to pop up on this map you on your phone. And then you capture them by throwing a ball at them. Ah, this Pokemon sounds like a waste of time. I mean a telephone with a screen? Talk about a fad. Can't we just play a nice game of shuffleboard instead? Oh, Grandpa, you'd love it if you just gave it a chance. Well, in any case, I'm gonna go catch Pokemans. Word on the street is, the area around this nursing home is full of them. But you just handed me your phone! Um, I'm a millennial. I have 12 phones. Smell you later, Gramps. Oh no, I'd better catch up to him or my daughter's going to kill me. Or at least put me in an even worse nursing home, if that's possible. Control Grandpa with Wild to check by using the spacebar. Use your mouse to tap on the phone. Tap the home button at the bottom of your phone to customize controls and other options. Why does the C look the same as the O? <laughs> Wait, what is WASD? Why did I just say that? Am I having another stroke? Oh, I picked the wrong day to forget to take my medicine. I'm gonna go have a stroke in this corner if you know what I mean. Oh, Pokemon. Oh, it's literally a ball with a face. I'm gonna catch that. And now it is inside another ball, becoming a Russian doll Pokemon, which I'm surprised doesn't exist already. Look at this fly shorty. Children keep coming through here and tramping on the flowers. It's like World War II all over again. Ah yes. Who can forget when the Hitler youth were recruited by uh, Hitler to stomp all over the tulips of uh, the Netherlands, crippling their economy, allowing Germany to become the flower growing capital of the world. Ooh, a bug on my phone. And now it's a bug in my ball. That is a surprisingly common problem at nursing homes. Hey, idiot children, move out the way. Word on the streets is that there's an extra rare, extra... Cute. It says cute. I figured it out. Pokemon somewhere around this nursing home. I'm sure you know which one I mean. Anyway, I refuse to move from the spot until someone tells me where it is. I could call the cops on you if I had a phone. Now where could I find a phone? All right, I need to find that extra, extra Ute Pokemon. Ah, oh, fish on land, why? This must be what she was talking about. Look at how cute it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I just got a feeling that might not be it. Ah, what's this? Ah, Pikachu. -orp. Looks different from the one I have on my desk. Oh, you got a Pikachu? -orp? He was hiding behind the nursing home, eh? Seems we trainers need to up our invasiveness. <laughs> Anyways, thanks. I'll move out of the way now. Thank you, obnoxious child. Who's that Pokemon? Ah, it's just eggs. Just some eggs. Ah, soup man. I have nothing to say about this. Ah, it's a dog who is a fish. Word has it, there's a pretty heavy-duty Pokemon in the forest just past here. Huh, you think you're bad enough, dude, to walk up and swipe your phone at it? Fair enough. Ooh, the music changed. It's like a weird Russian dealio now. It's gonna slowly build in intensity and get faster and faster. Until Rasputin dies. Ah, it's an eye magnet. I'm an eye magnet myself, if you know what I mean. This lake is kind of shaped like E.T. on the 2600. Ah, Charbazorb. There he is. Look at his beauty and majesty. Uh, he could use, like, a nose, probably. Or, like, another wing. Uh, some arms. Maybe, like, a big beefy arm coming out the back. Oh, my favorite Pokemon. The Tasteful Vaudeville Act. Whatever, fuck it. Grandpa! Billy, bless my soul, I was so worried. You can't just run off like that. What do you have to say for yourselves? Did you see that Charblazor back there? How cool was that? Criminy, Billy, I've just had about enough of this Pokemon business. I've been running all over creation, catching stupid looking monsters, grilling other Pokemon players for details. It all seems like a massive waste of time. And I don't have much of that left. Is it though? It got you out of your nursing home. Uh, it got you to talk to people you don't already know. Uh, How often does that happen? Whatever you think of Pokemon, it brings people together. What more can you ask of in a game? Oh, well, I guess, I guess. 
that it could actually be fun. Ooh, roasted! Come on, Billy, I've got a thing or two to teach you about shuffleboard! All right, that was pretty good. I only got 17 out of 18 Poke the Pokemon, but uh, what can you do? This was the first of three games that I have, though, about being an old guy. Welcome to Grandfather Din, which was apparently made in Florida. So you know it's gonna be good. How did we get here? How did it come to this? This is insanity. We old people always knew it would be trouble if the young would actually get out and vote, but we never saw this coming. For them to take over every level of government in one year is bad enough, but then they unveiled their coup de grace. The Neutralize Our Problematic Elders Initiative. Ooh. Ha, what a bunch of garbage. Damn kids blame us for all the world's problems. And what's their solution? Fascism? Test whether or not we can still contribute to society or change regressive behavior, and if not, send us away to God knows where's. They'll cl they claim we'll still be important pieces of the future, but I've seen how they treat us. I know we're just problems to them. Uh, next stop, Elder Processing. Well, I suppose this is it. Deep breaths, Horace. Nothing left to do now but think back on my study and training. Grandfathered in. More memes. Three months earlier. Grandpa! Grandpa, did you hear the news? I don't watch the news, Jay. Damned mainstream media and all. The Millennium Party ins instituted their platform this morning. The what? Why would I even care about that? They're doing no nope test, Grandpa. If you don't pass it, you'll be sent away. To where? Retirement home? That's not so bad. Maybe not for you, but where would I go? Let me help you study for the test. It'd be fun. I look all right. What kind of stuff is on this test? It's supposed to show whether or not you can, uh, you know, adapt. Be part of modern society, I guess. So, like, computers and stuff? I don't know. More memes. That's reassuring. Let's get on with it. All right. Choose a training subject to focus on each week. Training raises and lowers statistics in different ways. The clothes make the man. I want to choose the magical girl outfit. Oh, okay. Absolutely down with the clown. Training. Hmm. What are the youths like? Definitely not the good old days. That'll be bad. I need more memes. Well, if there's one thing the kids like, it's emoji. Okay, sure. This test is meant to prove your ability to uh, adapt and contribute in the modern world. So let's test you on the most important stuff first. Yeah? Like what? Video... Video games. Ah, oh, Jesus. I didn't choose that. Here, I brought my console over. See if you can hook it up and play. Jason hands you a heavy black rectangle. Alright, I had enough technology info. You notice the two cords hanging from it. One is a power cord, which you plug in. That part's, that part's easy. At least some things haven't changed. The other cord is unfamiliar with a solid metal connector, crimped at two corners. You squint at it and then realize that it has to go at, to the back of the television. Jason got you for Christmas two years ago. Miraculously, you find a matching port and the cables slide in with a satisfying click. Ha! I did it. I'm impressed. Now let's see how well you do with uh, the actual game. Jason thrusts a weirdly shaped black plastic object into your hands. Experimenting with the buttons on it, you learn that some buttons make your character run around while others make her jump or throw fireballs. I wonder what game he's playing. It takes a few tries, but you steel yourself against the challenge and combine your new abilities to guide your character to her destination. You turn to Jason, beaming. You see that? Level 1 cleared. Wow, Grandpa. I honestly didn't think you'd pull it off. This no business might be not so hard for you after all. Nope. Not with my favorite grandchild by my side, at least. Only grandchild, and uh, about that. What is it, Jay? I've been uh, offered a scholarship at the uh, local education center, or the LEC for short, and uh, I'm going to accept it. I was going to tell you earlier, but I thought you might not even try to, uh, you know, pass the test if you had known. So I'm on my own. Yeah. You sigh, knowing what you're up against, but Jason's confidence is infectious. Well, I can't be mad at you for going. You know your parents would be very proud of you right now. Yeah, you think so? Should I call them? I know so, Jay, because I'm proud of you too. And I made your parents, or at least one of them. Hopefully only one of them. Thanks, Grandpa. I knew you'd understand. Jason gives you a hug. You realize that this is going to be a long 12 weeks without his help. Did you know drinking increases your coolness twofold? Take that one to the bank. 
Let's try social media. From the front porch, you overhear a commotion across the street at Elroy's house. Ah, uh, good old Elroy. You wander over to investigate and find him yelling at three uniformed and armored toughs. I've just about had it with you cronies jumping up my ass for every damn thing. It's like this ain't a free country no more. Mr. Clark, need I remind you, you've already been issued two strikes, and a third is grounds for immediate rendition. And by that I mean you'll immediately be exposed to my rendition of Camp Town Ladies, and you don't want that. Oh. Strikes? You mean like the baseballs? Ah, <laughs> uh, piss on your strikes, piss on all this. The nope officers step towards Elroy, but you quickly step between them. Communication. <laughs> Horace, I need your help dealing with these pissants. I got this under control. Elroy, I'd rather you stick around in the neighborhood and not get sent to some home elsewhere. Besides, I don't really think you're in a position to negotiate. Who said anything about negotiating? Elroy. Elroy gives you a pointed look and then points th at the lead enforcer. Can you blame me for being ornery? Every night I wake up sweating, dreaming about the time I spent neck deep in the shit, wading through disgust and sludge, desperate to make it out alive. Did you serve in the war? <laughs> Shit, no, I'm talking about the time I fucked your mama. Oh! The successive blows, as brutal as they are gratuitous, after an eternity of violence, the enforcers finally apply wrist restraints to carry Elroy's bloody moaning frame away. I know this is likely to get me crucified on the internet, but I think feminism is a good idea. While minding your own business at the grocery store, you are approached by a young man of indeterminate racial origin. Ah, no. Why? <laughs> That's not a good way to react, by the way, if somebody of indeterminate racial origin approaches you. Don't lean back and yell to the heavens why. It's a bad idea. Yes? Excuse me, sir. I'm new to the neighborhood, and I'm not familiar with this store. Do you know where I can find the Sri Racha? I think Sri Racha has a picture of a chicken on the front of it, so I think, I, I think I'm pretty well qualified. Hey, I'm tolerant, though. Oh, I think that's on the aisle with the <laughs> ethnic food, so I'll show you where it is. You lead the man to the relevant aisle and find the Sri Racha pretty quickly. Hey, thanks, man. You're a lifesaver. Uh, you're welcome, brown man. The more you look at this man, the more familiar he seems. There's something about him. Don't know what I'd do without my Sri Racha. Oh, that's right. He's multi-platinum so singer-songwriter superstar Bruno Mars. I love Sri Racha. Put it on everything. So spicy. Uh, it's... Oh, that's real good. This is a good game. You've heard his music before and you find it largely acceptable. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Mars, I find your music largely acceptable. Haha, <laughs> thanks man. Nice to meet an honest person every once in a while. Ooh. Bruno Mars thinks I'm cool. <laughs> Name's Horace, pleasure to meet you. Likewise, you know, I could use a little more help getting to know the area and you seem like you'd be a wealth of knowledge. It's true, I've lived here for decades. I've seen it all. If you need to know something about the town, I'm your guy. Bruno takes your phone and puts his number in it as a contact and adds you to his phone book. You are now friends with Bruno Mars. <laughs> cool, I hit you up sometime. Thanks again for the help, Horace. I'll see you around. Bruno does an extremely cool handshake with you and heads off. Wow, that was Bruno Mars. You're eager to tell Jason about this, but you haven't been able to reach him since he went to school. Was Jason eliminated for not being cool enough? I'm not surprised. I always thought that was going to happen to him. At the park feeding the ducks, you come across a group of skateboarding teenagers. They approach you for no apparent reason other than you being the main character. What's up, old man? Hello, teenagers. Would you help me feed the ducks? You will learn responsibility. <laughs> now that's basic as fuck. We're here to get turned on our boards. This park Gucci for stunts. Yes, quite Gucci. <laughs> the things you have said are very good. Hey, why don't you give it a shot? See if you can grind that rail over there. The teens hand you a skateboard. I don't know, uh, whatever. Uh, I do not have the skills. I tried to train my skills before, and the instant you place your foot on the board, it rockets out from underneath you, sending you to the ground, and every bone in your body instantly shatters. One of the teens lays her hand on your shoulder, and you are miraculously healed by the power of her innocence. That was whack! I do not think skateboarding is for me. Goodbye. Visiting a local farmer's market to get fresh goods, you come upon a stand you've never seen before. Judging by the music, I suspect this stand is going to sell the ganja. Oh my gosh, it's weed bro. Hey bro, what's up? 
Uh, you know, it would be really easy to do this voice. Greetings, my brother. What is up? You peeping my kush? Come to sample my dankest? I've got some boss green that'll soothe your bones, old my man. Is this a marijuana thing? Ha! You got it, chief. So what do you say? Well, it is legal now, and I do need to get with the times, but how about I give you a free taste of some prime herbis? That'll help sway you, my brother. The vendor holds out what you assume to be some kind of marijuana cigarette. Gah. You reach out and slap the cigarette out of the stunned vendor's hand. It lands in a puddle. Oh! Hell to the Nizo, brother. Hell to the Nizo. That is some weak shit, compadre. No. No. Get your weed drugs away from me, you wasteoid loser. Get a job, I ought to kick you straight in the dick, you trash idiot. I found that offensive. The vendor, clearly distressed, signals to the nope security who come over straight away. Destruction of property and beration of a law-abiding citizens are examples of regressive activity. You are hereby issued a strike citation. Correct your behavior. God damn. Well. I've made it pretty far. This has got to be difficult to fuck up much worse now, right? There's no way I can get three strikes. Enjoying the fresh air in the park, your peace is interrupted by some hyperactive, unintelligible music. Distressed, you head over to see what, if you could put a stop to it. You find a group of ex-teenagers flailing around in formation. Not very closely to the beat, you manage to get the attention of one of them. Are they... Are they doing industrial dancing, which I don't think is a thing anymore? Hey, what's the racket over here? Oh, it's a bunch of weebs. Konnichiwa Ojisan. Ogenki do Desuka. Japanese, huh? I've been to Japan. <laughs> World War II reference numero dos. Nice One Piece shirt, man. I think uh, that's also, uh, I think that's Time Warner Cable. You trail off and blankly stare into the distance, lost in memories. A shrill voice pierces your trance and brings you back to reality. Hey, Sugoi, you're so lucky. When I graduate, I'm going to li go live in Japan. When you graduate, huh? How old are you? Ain't, ain't, ain't no senjutsu decide desu. I don't know what that means, but good luck to you. In the meantime, could you please keep it down? Some of us are trying to relax out here. Hmm, maybe if you can pass my test and prove that you are not a baka. Every time I hear the word baka, I just kind of look off into the mid-distance and imagine eating some baklava. Ah, uh, baklava with Bruno Mars. <laughs> All right, lay it on me. Hi, Ichi, no question. What is the most? What is the best two country in the world? Do you instantly want to say America, but you bite your tongue knowing what she wants to hear? Plus, with all this note business, you aren't sure of that anymore. Ooh, a tragic day. Japan. Wow, you are truly wise, Oji-sama. Next question: Who is stronger, Superman or Goku? You narrow your eyes. Superman is clearly the correct answer, but you're pretty certain she doesn't think so. Goku. <laughs> Gaku. Hi, it's Goku, but that's fine. Okay. Last two, no question. No. This will truly prove that you are a Segoi or Baka. Subs or dubs? Oh crap, I don't even know the answer to that one. I don't know what she means at all, but you think you know what subs are, and you've gotten this far just guessing against your better judgment. Uh, dubs? The color immediately drains from her face as she looks as if she's going to be ill. She grits her teeth and contorts her face in anger. Uh, N Nanda? You're no wise man. You're the devil. She strikes a very unintimidating pose. And you must be destroyed. Kia. With that, she whips out her phone and calls the no pot line. Within minutes, the goons arrive. She explains your preference for dubs. I don't know what that means. Like, in real life, I don't know what that means. Am I old already? You make me sick. A strike isn't nearly enough for filth like you, but it's all I have the power to give. May God have mercy upon your pitiful soul. Subs, not dubs. Dubs, not subs, or whatever the fuck I said. You still don't understand the question, but something deep inside you accepts that this was the correct outcome. Oh, I have stats. What the heck is poise? Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Does that do anything? Oh. Okay. How much poise does this have? 
maximum poise. <laughs> you startled awake in the middle of the night, convinced you feel an unusual presence. Oh. Uh, who's there? <laughs> Honestly, Horace, I've been gone four years and you've already forgotten me. Oh. Muriel, am I dreaming? Is it really you? You look suspiciously like a statue of liberty that's been disassembled. <laughs> no, Horace, you're not dreaming. I'm here to talk about this test. You've been studying hard to pass it, haven't you? Maybe a little bit too hard. Because you're not your yourself anymore. What do you mean? I was always down with the clown. <laughs> it's good that you're trying to change your ways, but you mustn't forget who you are. Sure, you'll make it past the test. But will you make it past? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> Horace, when we met, were you a tolerant, tolerant, trendy young man? I like to think I was pretty trendy. <laughs> You weren't. You were always a crotchety old coot in a young man's body. You were destined to be a grandfather. It would be a shame to lose that after all this time. <laughs> Plus, you'll be with me soon enough, and I want my horse, not some watered-down millennial turd. Yeah, I guess. I give up on the test. <laughs> no, you still never listen to me. How many times in our time did, did I tell you just to be nice to people or to try and keep up with the times? Pretty much every day, but you saw what they've done. <laughs> I know, and that's terrible. But just because they're going about it the wrong way doesn't mean they have some... doesn't mean they don't have some things, right? <laughs> Patience, tolerance, awareness, these are good things. Ignorance is not a virtue. It's a terrible situation. But you can use it to your benefit as a person. Just don't lose sight of your identity. Uh -oh. I'm trying, Muriel. Come on. <laughs> good. Thanks for waiting until I die to finally improve yourself, you horse's ass. Uh -oh. I love you too. Yeah, yeah. Whoa! Muriel smiles as she dissipates, and as soon as she's gone, you're unsure she was ever really there at all. Alright. It's the final countdown. Maybe I should uh, try and crank my grandpa at the last minute. Lawn maintenance. Perfect. You debark from the... Th debark? De you debark from the train and approach the imposing headquarters of the NOPE initiative. You're led, into so you're led to a cavernous waiting room at the center of the tower, where you sit with hundreds of other elderly people. I guess it's time to do this thing. Oh man, I dressed sharp for this. One by one, you watch as your peers are led through a door. Peeking around the atrium's massive central pillar, you can briefly see a long hallway before the door swings shut behind them. Some come back, looking shaken and relieved. Most don't, though. After some time, you're called by an open forcer. Horace Bowlers, please follow me. He leads you down a long hallway, past dozens of closed doors. Through some of them, you hear muffled voices. Some sound angry, others sound more apologetic or pleading. Finally, you reach an open door and are ushered inside. Sitting behind a desk is a severe-looking, expressionless woman. She must be your proctor. Mr. Bowers? Uh, hey. Let us begin. Oh, okay, hi. She slides a black, glossy rectangle towards you. When will Frankfurt, Kentucky have its next visible solar eclipse? Uh, you stare blankly at the rectangle and then look back up to her. Now how in the hell would I know that? What kind of test is this? Was I supposed to study Frankfurt, Kentucky? Hmm. The proctor makes a note on her pad and then retrieves the rectangle and places it back behind the desk. The proctor shows you a list of letters. Translate these. You don't necessarily know all of them, but there are a number of you you're definitely familiar with. Uh, laugh out loud. What the fuck? Oh my god. You make your way down the list pretty confident that you're getting them correct. Very good. Uh, this test is moving at a much higher rate than you imagined. What can they even really be learning about people? Hey, this test doesn't exactly seem fair, you know. Compl Complaining about perceived unfairness is an admirable attempt to make yourself seem more millennial, but will garner you no bonus points on this test. Moving on. The proctor pulls out several objects and spreads them on the desk. Before you are a fanny pack, a model train, a pair of sunglasses with plastic slats in places of lenses, and a trucker cap. Which one of these is cool, right? You wait instructions, but after a few seconds of the proctor's stare, you realize none are forthcoming. Ah, trends. You feel naturally drawn to the train, but know that you can't. That can't be the right choice. If model trains were hip, you'd be king. You'd be king shit on top of Trend Mountain. The fanny pack is too useful to be cool. The hat is tempting, but you're pretty sure truckers stopped being in decades ago. Are truckers cool again? It's hard to say. But you settle on the sunglasses because something so flagrantly useless has to exist for purely for cool factor. You pick them up, and the proctor puts away the other items. Why have you selected the glasses? They're, um, they're dope. That's how I describe them. Very good. Now put the glasses on. You put the shades on. How do you feel? 
Fine, I guess. A little silly. Can you see anything? Of course not. Am I supposed to? Mm, I'll take those back, thank you. You curse your, to yourself as you hand the glasses back to her. The proctor reaches down yet again and produces a small silver device. Make me hella clouds. Finally, smoking, not just a young man's game. You pick up the vape pen and activate it. You get a nice, dense mouthful before releasing an expansive, billowy vapor. After a few long draws, the room is hazy. That'll be enough, plea. You hold up one finger to the proctor as you draw one last inhale. Leaning back, you gracefully puff a few smoke rings into the air. You delay just long enough for them to expand, then forcefully blow another ring that travels through them. The proctor raises her eyebrows. Not bad, Mr. Bowers, not bad. You smile and hand the pen back to the proctor, who removes the tip and places it in the biohazard can. Now tell me, what are the trails left behind by jet aircraft? Uh, easy, chemtrails. They're the mind control chemicals that made the people vote your kind into power. That's an interesting take. I'll take it. The proctor writes in another note as you recline with your hands folded behind your head. Confident in your great answer. The proctor scans through her notes, then looks you in the eyes. We conclude with one final test, a hypothetical situation. Your granddaughter's boyfriend is doing the old-fashioned kindness of requesting permission to ask to, for her hand in marriage. He's black. You can't believe it. This is the easiest one yet. Nobody would be dumb enough to not tell her what she wants to hear. It's easy. It's as fine as, le as long as he's a good man who'll take care. You didn't let me finish. Oh? He wants to propose to her. You lean forward nervously. With a flash mob dance routine. Oh. You're sweating bullets. How could she upgrade the question to difficulty so immensely? I'd... I'd... I'd give my blessings. The amount of effort that would take shows that he must love my granddaughter very much. The proctor raises her eyebrows. Well, well, I'm impressed. That's far more tolerant than even I would have taken you for. More than myself, even. So, Mr. Bowers, you have completed your NOPE examination. I will now calculate your results. She scans her notes for what seems like an eternity. Right. Mr. Bowers, I have finished calculating your results. And? I'm pleased to report that you have passed the NOPE competency evaluation. Ah, oh, thank God. You have demonstrated an unusual ability to adapt to these changing modern times, proving that you can continue to exist without holding back our progress. You will no longer be closely monitored by NOPE enforcement, though we will require that you come in for an annual refresher to ensure your continued contribution to society's betterment. That seems fair. For all intents and purposes, you may now consider yourself a millennial. Okay, do I need to get like a job or something? Ha ha ha! Heavens no! I guess you still have a little to learn. She hands you a stack of papers and a card to carry, asserting your free status. You head back out to the hallway, suddenly relieved of the note burden. It's like you're seeing everything with brand new eyes. You see a poster of a diverse group of young people beseeching you to do your part. You've seen it all over town in the last few months, but never noticed its lack of other kin representation. You make a mental note to tweet a death threat at the responsible party when you get home. Crossing back through the atrium, you notice that there are nearly no old people left. It seems most couldn't hack it. What a bunch of losers. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag young at heart. When you arrive at home, you can't believe how archaic and embarrassing everything in your house is. My face when I gotta throw all this crap out. You begin the arduous process of throwing all your belongings, replacing once cherished family photos on your wall with posters of people who play video games on YouTube. Before long, most remnants of your past life as a cranky old bag have been trashed. While clearing out old boxes, you come upon an old family photo of the love of your past life, Muriel, in her younger days. You gaze at the photo for a minute or two, appreciating every detail. Oh, wow. You take out your phone and snap a picture of it. At Babes of History, you check out this hashtag old babe from like a million years ago. Hashtag boner alert. Tweet sent, you casually toss the photo into the bin. The rest of your days are spent in millennial bliss, drinking flavorless nutrient sludge while live-streaming your reaction to other reaction videos. Outside of your annual check-ins, you will never think about Nope again. You are killed several years later when her counterfeit organic K-cup explodes in your face. Luckily, you were broadcasting at the time, and the video of the incident has granted you the greatest ending of all, viral immortality. The face when you're the winner. I don't feel like it. This was originally supposed to be a three games video, like the one I did eight months ago. However, this uh, quickly became very long, and no matter how much I edit it down, it's still very long. So I'm doing the third game in another video, kind of defeating the purpose of the whole three games format. Oh well, here's a link to that.
and the old three games. <laughs>